Hey guys, a lot of you are asking how I was able to make the products magically fall from the ceiling in my last BoxyCharm video. That special effect was actually inspired by nerdy nummies and I was able to achieve it using iMovie, Apple's Keynote, and a free graphics editor. Today I'm gonna to show you how to do that effect plus more in your own videos. We're gonna be looking at three categories of special effects, making items appear and disappear, custom text effects, and custom transitions. To make an item appear, we first need to get a picture of something with a transparent background. Let's use Google to look for photos with a transparent background and filter it to images that we're allowed to reuse and modify. Let's get past the creepy hands and ooh, I like these Oreos. I'll right click and download this image. Now let's open Keynote to create a new presentation. Be sure to select wide at the top of the window as this matches the aspect ratio of the video that we're going to work on. Choose one of the first two themes cause it don't matter if you're black or white. <laughs> just kidding. Delete the text on the slide, then drag in the photo we just downloaded. This is a really big image, so I'm gonna resize it and place it where I want it to appear in the video. With that in place, click on the background, change the color to a medium blue or green color. Either color is gonna work, but if your item already has blue or green in it, you wanna choose the opposite color. Click on the cookies, then click on the animate button. This will show us three categories of animations. Build in, which are different ways for an item to appear. Action, which are ways for an item to move after it appears. And build out, which are ways for an item to disappear. Build in is already selected, so clicking add an effect gives us a long list of appearance animations. We can preview each one like pop, swoosh, anvil, confetti, ooh, but let's apply sparkle. Each animation has properties you can tweak. For sparkle, let's change the direction from left to right to right to left. And let's shorten the duration from two seconds to one second. We can then preview the results. Now let's add an action animation. There's a shorter list of these. Flip, jiggle, pulse. Let's choose bounce. Just for funsies, I'm gonna change the number of bounces from three to seven and preview the results. Finally, let's add a build out effect for making those Oreos disappear. I'm gonna choose skid. To coordinate multiple animations, click the build order button in the bottom right corner and tweak exactly when each animation happens. Let's tell the first one to start immediately, which is what after transition means. Then tell the second one to start as soon as the first one ends, and the third one to start as soon as the second one ends. We can preview the results and see the sequence of three animations working as expected. To get this into iMovie, we need Keynote to create a movie file with this content. Select the File menu, then Export To, then QuickTime. On the thing that pops up, be sure to change the format from 720p to 1080p so the animation has the highest quality possible. After clicking Next, choose a name for the movie file that Keynote is about to produce, and then watch it do its thing. We're gonna add this new movie file into an iMovie project that contains me talking behind an empty table. Drag the movie file we just created into the iMovie project on top of the movie clip where we want the special effects. Click on the clip we dragged in to make sure it's selected with a yellow border and make sure it's on a frame that contains both the green background and the Oreos. Otherwise iMovie can get kind of confused on this next step. We want iMovie to erase all the green. We can do this by clicking the first button at the top and then selecting green blue screen. Bam, all the green is erased, adjust the softness to be as high as possible without the Oreos becoming see-through and that's it. Now we can play the video. Making items appear and disappear. If you want to do this effect with your own custom item and make it look as realistic as possible, get it on camera in the exact spot that you want it to appear. If you put a plain background behind it, it will make this next step so much easier. Pause the video on a frame with the item, click the share button in the top right corner, then select image. This exports the current frame of the video as an image file. Let's name it microphone. Open that image in a graphics app that supports erasing backgrounds. I'm using a free app called GIMP, but there are many apps out there and I've linked a couple in the description box as well. In GIMP, we first need to add transparency support to the image by selecting Layer, Transparency, Add Alpha Channel. Then select the Fuzzy Select tool, increase the threshold, you'll know the right amount by trial and error, and then click the white area and hit Command X to cut it out of the image. Finally, using the rectangle select tool, we can select the remaining regions to be cut. 
It's important that we don't crop the image because the microphone needs to stay in the original spot and in the original size. Save this image as a PNG file. Now we can drag it into Keynote just like we did with the Oreos, except the image is perfectly sized to fit the background. This time, let's add the drop effect, which is what I used in the BoxyCharm video. For a build out effect, crumble is pretty cool, but I'm gonna choose flame. Let's adjust the build order like last time to make the flames appear as soon as the microphone is done dropping. Export a 1080p movie just like last time. Drop it into iMovie. Choose green blue screen. Increase the softness and enjoy the results. Items appear and disappear. To create custom text effects, we do the exact same thing in Keynote, but with text that we configure instead of an image. Keynote has way more options for positioning and customizing text than in iMovie. Here I'm creating large text, changing the color, and adding a custom shadow. We can apply animations the same way as before, although Keynote provides even more options for text. Here are two examples, squish, and trace. Some of the text animations can be changed to animate line by line or even letter by letter. Let's change the delivery to by paragraph to see this effect happen one line at a time. I'm going to reduce the speed to half a second and see what that looks like. We can choose some of the animations we saw before and that line by line behavior can still be used. We can see that with anvil and with bouncy. Let's keep bouncy, although I'll slow it down a bit. For a build out animation, I'm going to choose confetti. Let's give the effect some gravity. And let's make this animation happen line by line as well. Now let's sequence the three lines of build in effects and three lines of build out effects so each one starts as soon as the previous one ends. Export the 1080p movie as before. Drag it into iMovie, enable green blue screen, and I've decided to speed up the clip a bit using iMovie's speed option so the effect completes by the time I'm done talking about it. Custom text effects and custom transitions. For the final trick of custom transitions, we need to create a keynote animation that goes from all green to all blue, or vice versa. First, click the shape button and choose the square. It's filled with this texture by default, so choose a solid medium blue color as its fill and remove its shadow. Now stretch it to cover up all of the green. Choose a build out animation to customize how it will disappear. I've chosen crumble. This is the only animation we need. I'm still clicking on build order though to make the transition start instantly. Export the 1080p movie. Drag it into an iMovie project that has the clip you want to appear at the beginning of the transition. Enable green blue screen and you can watch your half finished transition. Create a movie file by selecting Share and File. Although the final video I'll create for YouTube will use the high quality setting, I like to use the best setting for intermediate clips used by my project. I also choose Better Quality Compression, which doesn't take that much longer than the other choice. Once the movie file has been created, drag it into an iMovie project with a clip that you want to appear at the end of the transition. Move to a frame with enough green on it, then select Green Blue Screen to replace the green with the clip underneath. Voila! and custom transitions. That's gonna wrap up things for today. I hope you guys learned something. If you did or used any of these tips and tricks in your videos, let me know, shoot me a link. I would love to see it. As always, I hope you guys are doing awesome. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.